And today our special guest is Panda. Hello, I'm the five-time tournament winner of Gods of Gravity. Yeah, we're really excited to have Panda on today to just talk about a, a really cool clip that we happened in Tournament 3, something that changed the course of the game, and something that Jack and I were blown away by during the moment. So we definitely wanted to circle back, and now that we have time with Panda, I'd love to hear Panda kind of break down what happened and explain his, his thought process. Right now, we're all just rushing around trying to get as many plants as possible since we're both tied. It's really just a stalemate of who can get the most moons and planets. But right here, BD catches me off guard going straight for the home base attack. I know right here I don't have a lot of time because if I go straight for an attack, all my ships are going to have to immediately be fought. So I go straight, for, I go for the planet instead of my home base first just to see if I can get power cut off to his base and get a few free kills. But this is where defense really plays the big part in this tournament. Because you can see how long it took him to take down just only the like defense turrets on that planet. And there was only one left, which is why this moment is so like last minute and big. Because if I would have left like a second later, that would have been the end of me. I would have lost that tournament. So as soon as I take out all his ships, I immediately rush the sun because this will give me power to his base and just allow the game to be over. Yeah, that was a great move. Can you talk a little bit about how power plays a role in the game and what it is? Power is a big part of the game for the reason of you can't, you need certain power ranges to get to places around the map. So being able to know which planet gives you which power around the map is like a really big advantage. If you, if you know what power you have and which planet gives it where, you can start to manipulate which planets you take so you can go to the next one immediately instead of having to go through unnecessary planets that you don't need to take that just slow you down. And you can also use it like I did here to cut off your enemy's power so they lose all contact with their ships. And that's also why I like to take the sun because that eliminates any risk of power on my part. Taking the sun will give me the buff along with the power boost, so immediately I can rush anything I want with no issues. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, when you get the sun buff, your ships are powered everywhere. So that's a way to guarantee that you don't get cut off when trying to take somebody's home base. How much do you focus on the mini-map or, you know, looking down at your map? Because you had to be aware of that moment and just see where the power where that power range stopped. Were you aware of that? Do you look at that constantly? Like, what is your thought process and how much do you use the minimap to gauge what you're going to do next? In other games, I really do focus on the minimap, but on this one, I just always keep my eyes on my opponent. I look at the minimap only to check the ship count, like how many ships are where and how, like, tied we are. But in that moment, it was really just a last-minute thought of, if I go for this planet first, I have the smallest chance to actually let this work. So it was more of like a last minute, let's see if it works thing. And to break down, I just want to make sure our viewers understand that moment a little better. So there is a production planet, which Speedy God took, uh, which gave them power to attack Panda's home base. But when Panda comes in, instead of going directly for the home planet to, to try to defend. Panda goes for that planet that Speedy God took, which is essential for Speedy God's power there. And so once Speedy God had lost that production planet, which was providing that critical power to the home base, their, all of their attacking ships lost power, and Panda was able to easily come in and clean up those ships, which effectively was GG, since... Panda had so many more ships after slaughtering Speedy God's army at the home base. Yeah, you can see right there how there was only one turret left, and just a half a second later, that would have been end game. Yeah, because I guess Speedy God never did fully take your home planet. No, nah, that's, that's why I had to go for that planet really quickly, because as soon as that last turret goes down, he has power there. So with that power, I, I would just have to do a huge fight. It would leave us tied again. That was just one move that could really give me the win. 
Something I've noticed um, is that in a lot of the tournament games, it seems to be only Panda who's uh, using using the sun, and a lot of players seem to ignore it. Panda, why do you think that is? If you notice my play a lot in these like uh, new tournament maps where they're based on advanced, I rush the uh, torpedo planet as quickly as possible because I main volatility. Volatility gives me that huge just piercing and exploding damage. A lot of players play defense production, so if they go for the sun, they're going to be at a big disadvantage, probably going to lose upwards like 20 ships. But a volatility player who has torpedoes and whatnot can easily wipe out that sun in a couple seconds and have a huge defense on it with no way of taking it back. That makes sense. And for those of you who don't know, the buff that the sun gives you, um, it makes your uh, ships more effective in combat through increased firing speed and rotation speed, among some other uh, buffs like larger shields. But it also... Uh, and as we said before, it gives you power. But the final element is that it significantly boosts your production. Have you have you noticed that production boost, Panda? And have you been able to utilize that to you know come back or just you know recoup your losses after a fight? Definitely, that's uh, it's possible. You get any moon you can before you get the sun or during taking the sun. While your ships are attacking it, you go collect all the moons you can just so you can get that more production buff. And that's also a way you can counter the sun buff is by removing every like the person's moons just so they don't get as buff as much as a buff from the sun. Yeah, no, that that makes a lot of sense. Have you played much since the the moon turret amounts have been changed and updated? I haven't played a whole bunch, but it has affected my gameplay a bit. Because the way I used to measure how many ships I had in my hand was putting it next to a moon and then just subtracting one. So it has led to a few moments where I thought I had more ships than I actually did. Yeah, I asked because I'm curious how, you know, you're saying just go around and take everyone's moons. Uh, but now moons can even have upwards of four turrets on them. And yeah. it, seems, it seems a lot harder to go around taking everyone's, everyone's moons there. It is and it isn't early game. It really is because that's where you're like trying to keep as much troops as possible. But when you have about 25 to 30 ships and you start using the chain method of using portals and going around the map quickly, if you place your portals right, your ships will immediately take down the turrets about as fast as the one turret and still go through the portal about the same speed. Yeah. yeah, Bandit, I'm curious about that. So with the God of Conquest's new ability to project power from moons, how do you think that will impact the game? And do you think that god will have a slight advantage, especially in situations like this? Conquest has always been, like, either a hit or miss type of god. They have strong abilities, especially right now. Having extra power is really nice and can give you a huge advantage. But not having any other defense or attack type passive really hinders it. Because, say, volatility or uh, even production could still wipe out a conquest player, even if they're pushing farther, because they don't have any form of extra attack or extra defense. And that's always why I've avoided that god. The extra power is nice, and it can be used in situations like 1v1s to get to a planet that you're not able to quicker or have more access to Moon's early game. But I don't think it's going to have that big of an effect, depending on how big the power range is. I think definitely if Speedy God was a Conquest player, uh, especially you know if you take the home base Moon, then you already have power at the home base. So th it gives you a lot more flexibility and coverage. Um, and it leaves less like critical points that your power could be cut off at. <laughs> yeah, they would have yeah. to get the moons and the planets as well. Yeah, and that's true. I think it. I think it comes down to how each player plays the god, and I think it. I think people will discover styles. And for somebody who wants to have protection and maybe a, a different style of play, to making sure that their attacks are never without power, God of Conquest could help. It really can be, but there's a lot of strats besides like being able to escape quickly to of like make the emp not as strong 
such as like putting your ships behind a portal so they won't get shot immediately and then pulling them away as soon as their ships turn around. Stuff like that to just leave your ships safe even though they don't have any defense troops. I'm always curious. Um, there are a lot of maps like uh, like battleships and like every map with the, the buffed sun that have planetary shields on neutral planets that are uh, key strategic points. Um, and the EMP, if used on those planets, does disable that shield. Do you find, as God of Conquest, you'd be going for the sun more if you could disable that shield around it? Most likely, most likely not. Because getting rid of that shield gives you a huge opportunity to take the sun. But taking the sun isn't all the battle. It's also holding it down. So even in a 1v1 situation, or especially like an open match situation, you taking down that shield has just, just let every player in that lobby know, oh, that's a free kill. So if you go after that sun, you have no extra attack, no extra defense. So Conquest is going to lose a decent amount of ships, and they're going to have no way to properly defend that planet. So when other players like Volatility or Production jump in, that Conquest player is going to be knocked out and going to have to run. Yeah, so it's important when you take the Sun that you have a pretty significant troop advantage, wouldn't you say? Yeah, at least, like, 20 ships. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, what do you think? You said you main volatility. What is it about that god that you really like or that you find, you know, puts you in an advantage over the other gods? My early game is my strongest. My speed, along with just being able to gather everything, allows me to do stuff very quickly. And production may give you the like more ships, but volatility gives you the huge advantage of getting more ship kills per shot. So I can take planets like the Torpedo Planet within the first minute of the game just because of volatility and knowing how to take over planets smartly. So it allows me to do more with less. Can you explain a little bit about uh, that passive ability you're referring to? So the way it works is I think it's 20% chance. So when an uh, enemy ship is killed by mine, there's a 20% chance that it will explode, causing pretty much AoE damage to any other ship nearby. And if I use stuff like rockets and torpedoes, the original AoE of the torpedoes plus the AoE of that percent chance can lead to a chain effect of just being able to wipe out enemy troops. Yeah, it's a powerful ability indeed, especially against uh, cl like clumped together enemy um, fleets. Yeah. How do you find the the nukes fitting into your gameplay? They used to play a decent bit in my gameplay, but when I play Volatility, I don't use its ultimate, and nukes are just a part of my fleet. If they're there, they're there. I'm not focused on them. They help out, but it wouldn't change me much if they were or weren't there. I don't find them as a big contribute to all of Volatility. That's fair. I They have recently... Uh, been nerfed a fair amount and are are less oppressive and uh, in my opinion hopefully more balanced and fair but they're definitely so powerful i recently i used them on the battleships map i used my ability to get about 10 nukes and then i just absolutely nuked the battleship planet and it was able to quickly take it and lock it down to get those those turrets defending it and start the battleship production It's a so, decent, it's a decent strat to do that, but I've always, I've never seen it as a good use of ships just to kill ten off, just be able to get like a planet or so, or just to have those ten nukes. They're never as useful as those other ten other troops. I, I do see you in Discord a lot, and you're you're always talking with new players, and I see you imparting some wisdom in there. Is there anything that new players ask you all the time, or that you see new players stumble on, that maybe you could give them some advice on how to improve their game? One aspect that I do notice a lot, it's very small, but it takes people a long time to realize it if they're not told. The 
they don't realize that you can move with the hand that you're holding ships in, which is a huge aspect. They will move with, like, they're holding ships in one hand, but moving only with the other one, so they're kind of crawling around the map. I, I feel like that could be in the tutorial just to show you that you can move with both hands even when holding ships. That's funny because it is in the tutorial and we're talking about that moment right now because I feel like it, it is something where people struggle with in the tutorial. Um, so it's something Jack's been reworking yeah. and we've been giving feedback on to improve the new player experience for sure. Besides that, I usually just help uh, new players with like better portaling, just showing them how to move their ships easier around the map instead of placing portals too far or too close. Cool. Well, that's it for me. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, Panda. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to talk us through all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, anytime I can. If you ever need me, I'm always here. One of my favorite games. Thanks for coming on, Panda.